listen, today, I had a bad day this morning. I had a really bad day this morning. I had to get on with my therapist this morning, let some other people know I'm really struggling today. I didn't sign up for this, and I don't know when it's gonna happen. I just wake up, and by the way, man, our show won Emmy last night. Congratulations, man, that's awesome. I should be sky high today. <laughs> and instead, I woke up in the worst gray, been in it a long time, and had nothing to do with anything else. I just, man, woke up in the tank. But I know now to go do things. But also, every day in my life, it is, it's hard for me to get out of bed in the morning. So I made a decision long ago, I can either lay in bed or I can get my butt out of bed and then go be relentless once I make that decision. So I decided to be relentless every single day of my life. And again, it's that thing I said before, of, hey, I'm not gonna outwork these guys by a little. I'm gonna outwork them by a lot. I'm gonna be absolutely relentless. And the other thing my mental health issues did, it always made me feel like I was down. So I never minded getting knocked down. So I was rejected yeah. more than any human being I've ever met in my life on the way to this, this journey. And again, it was 11 years to get a full-time paycheck. And during that 11 years, I was applying and calling and calling and being a pain in the butt and being relentless. Rel but I didn't mind getting rejected because I felt like I belonged there. So then I look back now and go, wow, where did these mental health issues actually work for me? And everybody out there, we can look and see what they, where we thought they hurt us and flip the script on it and say, man, they actually helped us in certain ways. A lot of people say, how can you complain? Your life is great. My life is great, but between my ears sucks. Yeah. And I, again, I didn't sign up for that. So I'm gonna try and help people that between the ears, we see something different than maybe what's, what's reality also. Um, but I get this call from my agent and even getting that guy's name is Maury Gostrand. What year is this? You're on 99. Okay. So I've gotten turned down by agent after agent after agent after agent. And man, and it's, it is brutal. Um, but I just picked myself up, brushed myself, let's keep going, let's keep fighting. And he calls me up and he says, hey, what are you doing? I said, I'm on a little driving range with Tiki Barber. And he said, you could finally exhale. I said, what's up? He said, you finally got a full-time job. I get a little choked up even talking about it because it's my moment. I said, oh. he, I said, with who? He said, CBS Sports, they got the NFL back and you're gonna be their NFL insider. You're not gonna be on camera, you're gonna be their NFL insider, they're gonna mention you and you're gonna have this thing called a ticker, a crawl, which is gonna break your news, which really I think existed before that. Um, and now it's everywhere, right? Right, right. And I said, I'll take it. And he said, don't you wanna know how much it's for? I said, I don't care. Because it validated me when I walked in the giant locker room six years earlier, seven years earlier, and I said, man, I'll be the last dude standing in here and I'm gonna do it differently. It validated me. So that was my moment that was bigger for me than any amount of money could have been. That's the equity. I want to ask a hard question, I th Good. Uh, which is for a lot of people that are experiencing the kind of anguish internally that yeah. you were, and it's when it's combined <clears throat> with- Damn, <throat> it ain't over. Right, but I, I, what I'll say is, when I say where, I guess I mean, you've got this going on still to this day, yeah, but yeah. then you also had making 10 grand a year right. in New York City. Right. A lot of people fall into the cycle of addiction. Yep. You know, did you did you ha struggle with that, or did, or if you didn't, how did you avoid it? Because for so many people, when they're no. right at that margin and a, and a bill bounces, yeah. or they get ev evicted from their apartment because <clears throat> they didn't make rent for three months. Yeah, that's that spiral downward. We had yeah. Dr. Drew on the show, and he talked. He was talking about a lot of experiences, and with no. people that are high level. I didn't turn to drugs for anything like that. I always drank socially, and yeah, I'd hit the bar. But I hate the bar in the good times and bad times because for me, that was a social thing. I need teams around me. And even that for me, it was like a good, it was a community. Um, but you didn't find, you didn't like get connected into like that sort of, someone to say it's self-medicating. Not because I've been rejected. I had issues with Vicodin that, again, I, I started fighting at an early age and then just kind of got handed out. I don't even know by who or when, but this was the mid 90s and there was no opioid crisis back then. I'm like, it's a pain. We play a pain, a, a sport of pain. It's a painkiller. Sign me up. Sounds great. And it felt great. And then over time, I used them for uh, social anxiety issues and then realized over time, like, okay, when I would use those and I would combine with alcohol and I'm going through my issues, if I'm out, these would get involved too much and that's not good for anybody. So yeah. I stopped with that. And it actually took me until... A year and a half ago was the first time I was supposed to go out with Stray Ham for dinner. And I was having a really, really, really bad social anxiety and depression day. 
And at this point, it, the beast really got out of the box, really, really bad. And it's the first time I ever called him and said, can't go to dinner tonight. The beast got out of the box. In the past, I would have popped a bike in and had some alcohol and gone out and dealt with it. And it's the first time I said, can't go out, beast got in the box, out of the box. And he said, and when I have a really bad anxiety and depression bout, I feel it physically. Yeah. I feel it on the left side of my gut, I feel it behind my rib, rib cage, and I feel it in my joints like I just had a 50 round fight in the rain. And man, it sucks. It's debilitating. And I just said, can't go out tonight, man. The beast got out of the box. And he said, um, Yeah, so what'd you do? He said, uh, you, you want to talk about it? And I said, No, I, I do, but I want to go to sleep right now. I want to sleep this one off and, and live to fight another day. And he said, Do you want me to come over, though? I said, No. Not yet, not just, and then he said, why have you never told me about this? The first time I ever told him. Never this is the him. first time? That's the first time. And he's been and your buddy for- the first time I didn't use Vike and, and alcohol and go out and deal with it. And I said, no, he's been my best friend since 1993. It's now 30 years. And he said, why have you never told me? And I said, I don't make up the rules of this thing. With you, I felt shame. I felt ashamed and probably because we're so competitive. And he said, yeah, but you, took my ability away to be your best friend for all these years. I could have been there for you for all these years. So now I don't go another day without telling him or someone else. I tell everyone, um, and that's how I deal with it now. So no more, no more that for me. Now I call, <clears throat> and you know I want people to understand the busiest people in the world. When you say to them, man, I'm struggling, I have this, they will make time for you. And if they don't, they're not the right ones for you. But like The Rock wrote my forward, <clears throat> and he said, I don't, normally do these, but you're gonna be a voice for the grave for all of us, all of us. And now he's starting to talk about his issues as well, but he's the busiest guy in the world. I call him when I'm struggling, dude. And we have a thing like, we don't go a day without responding, uh, either one of us. And you know, there's some people I know I could lean into more than others. Um, yeah. But for the most part, man, it's been, I don't know, 90% of when I call people say I'm really struggling. They're there. Someone hit me up today. Uh, Andrew Whitworth, former left tackle from the Rams, hit me up today, was honest. I said, dude, I'm, it's one of those days, man, I'm just struggling. And he is down here doing something today. He said, uh, I could <laughs> get choked up talking about this, like how much people were there for you. But he said, I could be to your house by this afternoon. Like, man. So here is a big difference in, I think how beautiful that is. Instead of me, yeah, using substances or anything like that. And again, I, I didn't have addiction per se, but this is, a, this is a much better way for me to handle things, but look at the response. And it, again, I wanna really put this out there because people are afraid to turn into people. And that just hasn't, my experience has been so amazing. It's not because I'm Jay Glazer. It's not the reason. People truly wanna help you and be there because I think in this point in life also, more and more of us are facing things or we know someone who's facing things, and the more we can talk about it, the more it's gonna help them. If you enjoyed this clip, we've got more where that came from. Be sure to check out my full conversation with Jay Glazer. And one of the best ways you can help support us is to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our interviews and short videos as they come out each week.